In this video, I'll begin making a box for the cast aluminum dominoes. This has become sort of a long-term project, and I hope to show you a glimpse of the rabbit hole I went down over the last few months. This represents about 10 versions of the box that I explored. The first solutions were simple solid wooden boxes with a cast aluminum top. The pattern on the box is an abstraction of the method that I use for generating the pips on the dominoes. You'll also see a space for a pencil and paper on the first couple versions, but I gave this up pretty quickly. These two at the end represent the most simple approach. I could have stopped here, but I think that that would make for a boring video and wouldn't be very challenging. So then I decided to look at laying up the wood in an interesting way. The first is a simple CNC finger joint in flat stock, likely walnut and paduk as either species would look great with cast aluminum. The other solutions were laying up the stock and milling the box out of that. Then I started to wonder what a cast aluminum box might look like. In these boxes, the form takes on a pattern draft and has feet to lift it off the table. The first box is all aluminum and would need to have a wooden CNC pattern made due to its size. The second box is more of a chassis that I could break down into components small enough to print on a 3D printer. These red pieces have been compensated for the aluminum shrinkage and are all ready to print. This represents all of the pieces. The holes in the bottom of the pieces are sized 1 64th of an inch larger than the steel pins and are precisely a quarter inch diameter in the top pieces. Now for the final glue up and finishing of the box pattern. I am using 5 minute epoxy to join the 3D printed parts. Originally I was considering leaving the bottom assembly in three parts. This would allow me to change the length of the box by changing the beam length at the bottom. I eventually decided to glue these together for ease of casting the final piece. Next I'll coat all of the pieces with super thin CA glue. This will fill in some of the texture left by the 3D printer and is much nicer to sand than PLA plastic. For the first pass, I will use a file, then 220 grit, and then I will wet sand with 600 grit sandpaper. The final step for this pattern is to coat it with paste wax. Sodium silicate sand will act like glue so I am thinking of this more as a release agent. After letting the wax dry for about 10 minutes, the surface can be buffed to a high gloss. With the pattern complete, I'll need to make a box for the sand mold. I will initially put this together with glue and brad nails. To strengthen the box I'm using some scrap 2 inch steel angle for the corners.
Rather than measure every hole, I made this jig to fit a sharpie tip. This is a self-centering drill bit for mounting hinges. Since sodium silicate sand has almost zero green strength, it is necessary to add internal ribs for holding the sand in the mold. Now I'm finally ready to ram up the mold. I'm applying a liberal amount of talc to the pattern as the wet sand will likely soak up most of it. I am shooting for a mix of approximately 4 to 5 percent sodium silicate sand by volume. So for about 240 ounces of sand, I'll mix in about 12 ounces of sodium silicate. Sodium silicate will dry on its own when exposed to air, or the process can be sped up by exposing the sand to carbon dioxide. When cured, it has the consistency of a sugar cube with about the same surface quality. This can be improved by adding starch into the mix, but the more dense it is, the greater the chance for trapped gas. Once the mold was flipped over, the surface was allowed to dry during lunch. Then the other parts can be placed to the cope side of the mold.
I'm adding vents here to help the mold fill completely. While the sand is still wet, I'll cut the sprues in the mold. To speed up the curing, I'll apply some CO2 directly to the surface. This will penetrate about an inch and gives enough strength to be able to handle the mold. I am gently separating the mold with shims to make sure everything splits nicely. Here I am cutting a simple runner from one side of the mold to the other. This way I won't do any damage to the geometry of the part that I want to keep. These are the vent holes that I covered when I was striking off the top of the mold. Here I'm making some quick Petrobon funnels and risers for the cats. Now I just need to melt some aluminum. Since cured sodium silicate sand is about the consistency of sandstone, the shakeout is a bit more involved.
Here you can see the surface finish of the part. It is pretty good, although it require more finishing than I'm used to with Petrovond. Here's where the corner of the mold is missing. No big deal. Since I used Petrobond for the riser, here you can clearly see the difference in surface quality. This is one of the sprues from the domino cast. If you look closely, you can even read the letters on the cast bolt head. Next, I'm going to start to finish this rough casting and begin working on the lid.